Greetings and salutations. Uh, it's Dave DuFord, El Jefe. I'm here with a couple of friends in the business, Mr. David Heath, one of our uh, DeFord Insurance Group face-to-face -face trainers, and uh, Peter Pilar or Pillar? Pillar. A Pillar. lot of people say Pillar, though. Yeah. Okay. That was the French in me, Pilar. So Pillar, yeah. just like it looks. Yep. Um, yep. That's what I say. Awesome. I'm, I'm here with Peter and David because uh, we've got a little testimony I want to share with you about Peter's results so far in our mentorship program. Uh, quick recap, if you aren't aware, we totally rebranded to Ford Insurance Group at the beginning of 2023 to really go intensively in the one-on-one -on -one mentorship direction uh, to where I'm now leaning on people that I've helped in my agency now have become managers. And uh, the purpose of this video is just kind of give you an inside look at what that process has been like in a success story uh, uh, with Peter joining us and really uh, gleaning on everything we've talked about and seeing uh, quick results right away. So uh, why don't we start with this uh, real quick, uh, David, give us a, a quick 30 second, second or less introduction about yourself so that our audience can become more familiar with you. Well, my name's David Heath. Uh, I've been here at Do 40 Insurance Group for a few years now. Um, my past is insurance related. I've worked with several different companies, held several various positions, management positions, uh, but really excited about the new new opportunity that we have here, and that's the mentorship program. And uh, we're already seeing good results out of it, and we're just tickled to death to try to bring that failure rate down at right. Do Ford Insurance Group. Right, right. Because industry wide, the failure rate is at least ninety percent. That's probably being um, nice. And that's part of that reason why there's lots of reasons, but one big reason why is the lack of training. So let me call in Peter. Uh, Peter, why don't you uh, introduce yourself to the audience and tell us how you got involved with the Ford Insurance Group. So I'm Peter Piller. I'm 26. Um, no background in insurance, no background in sales at all. I was going to school for business, um, thinking finance, didn't know what I was going to do. And um I found out, out about you before the group. I was almost going to join uh, what was called Bright Lighthouse, which was like a subsidiary of FFL. Um, and then, you know, there's some, some questions. The woman's trying to hard sell me on the position. She gave me like a deadline of 48 hours to make a choice. And I was like, you know, I'm going to let this ride out. Feels weird. Found you as an admin on some forum. I don't even know what it's called. It was years ago. You were just an admin as one of the Really? And, wow. and I was looking okay. for someone that I couldn't, that I couldn't find any negative stuff about. And, and I was reading all the people and, and it just, everyone kept saying good things about David DeFord. And then I, and then I rolled into you again on YouTube and that's kind of finding the agency, I guess. Um, and, uh, and I watched, you know, I spent probably about 500 hours with you before you spent 30 minutes with me <laughs> um, watching everything over the course of probably the last one and a half, two years. And, uh, and just decided that based on what I saw, uh, how really kept it, um, it just seemed like a really interesting opportunity. And uh, yeah, I don't know how deep you want me to go on that, but that's kind of how I found you. Well, I think a good follow-up to that would be why final expense? So a lot of people watching this are considering a career in insurance and there's not just final expense, man, there's all sorts of great opportunities. So what was it about final expense that compelled you to jump in that direction uh, and, and commit to that. So there's two things, I guess, part of it is you gotta, when you don't know anything, you gotta kind of trust in someone. So I, I had to upfront believe that you were saying it's a more simple product than getting into something like health insurance upfront. It has more upfront money. Um, but the really big thing with me is I really like working with older people. And so that was also another, uh, box checked for me. Um, but yeah, so to kind of frame it, I guess it, I was interested in the opportunity and then I tried to listen to someone like you that was a professional that, cause I don't know anything. So, you know, what it was basically what you told me about final expense sold final expense to me. If that makes sense. It, it is funny. I find in, in my years of doing YouTube, like a good percentage of the people, they're not necessarily looking for final expense, that, but they find me online and they watch the content and are, are educated on the business model and they're, they become open-minded to it with time. So that's been interesting versus where I came into it. I guess I was kind of the same way, but I started finding out about insurance, didn't know much about it, and then discovered the final expense process. So so working with with seniors, 
Mm -hmm. um, was a big thing. The other thing that you do, and we're going to get into your production because you've been crushing it here lately. So, so for those of you out there, stick around with that. Cause we're going to go into the good, bad, and the ugly <laughs> when it comes to getting out there and seeing the people, but you chose the face to face route as opposed to telesales. A lot of people are going the remote route or the telesales route. Why are you selling in person? What conscious decisions did you make to go that direction? So I may be unique in this sense, uh, only I don't think I am because John Campbell's in the same boat, but I have no interest in selling over the phone whatsoever. Uh, I love the idea of going out and meeting people face to face, meet, you know, seeing parts of the townships and country that I haven't seen, um, meeting their pets and, and sitting down and like that, that to me is a huge part of this business. And it was theoretically up front and then it proved to be true. It's it's something that I really enjoy about this. I mean, I literally go around, sit down with old people, have a cup of tea and pet their cat. And we just talk about, you know, a few things, but mostly we were talking about their kids half the time. So it's uh, it's everything I thought it would be. And, and that in person is really important to me. I, I, I don't, I, I don't want to be stuck in a, in a, in a room. I'm not like that. I'm not a homebody like that. I want to be out doing stuff. So that, that was going to be my follow-up. Was it more of that you love being with people in person or that you hate the idea of being stuck in the home that kind of drove you to the in-person side? I think both. I think it's a, it's like I'm fully sold on being in person for both of those reasons. Yeah. Were, you, were you fully sold when you started or did you get fully sold after you started seeing the people getting in front of them and presenting? Um, I'd say it was twofold. I loved my experience in the field has been excellent. Um, and also, I when I talked to is Chris, what's his last name? Sorrentino. Yeah, Sorrentino. when I talked to him, and he was super honest about what telesales is really like, um, and the volume you do, and just it just I don't know, it just didn't the combination of those two things having that realistic framework for what that's like. Um, yeah, they just it just kind of culminated in in me just completely being and and also a huge part of it was what you said is that I, I have no background in sales, I have no background in insurance, and and you know, the way you always said it is this is the best route to go first, direct mail, face to face, final expense. So I, I literally just followed what I heard you say over the last two years. Right. Yeah, it's I, and I, 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 I'm afraid that I'm coming off to my audiences anti telesales. It's not the intention. Um, what I try to do, we train agents. I mean, Chris wrote 32,000 in a week of final expense. You know, he's been working with us for years now and it's all over the phone with him. So we're not against telesales, but I, I guess what I'm more concerned about is the longevity of an agent's career and, and really more importantly than long. Well, that's important, too. But getting started is what's really, really important on the right foot. And my advice, anybody out there who's considering, should I sell remotely or over the phone or should I go see people? If you really feel in your heart of hearts, you should sell in person, do that. Likewise, for telesales, if you feel like you're made for the phone, that remote sales is just this appealing concept and you love the idea of it, follow your heart and your gut. If you're unsure, though, you, the odds are higher for success industry-wide if you just sell face-to-face. -face. It's 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 just the way it is. It's not, I won't say it's easy to sell face-to-face. -face. It's not easy at all, but it's simpler and there's a lot less complication than what one would find doing telesales. So just a little bit of advice for agents. David or Peter, do you want to add to that before we move on? Well, one, one thing, Dave, with me, um, if you're a people person, I really believe, you know, at least starting out in face-to-face, -face, because I've had friends in the business that started there, because like you said, it is easier to get your start. With telesales, there's all this technology involved nowadays. And someone like me that struggles with that a little bit, I, you know, that is a deterrent for me. Not to say, because Chris is killing it, you know, and others are yeah. in our group. But, you know, I think if you're just a people person, you'll know which one you want to do. But the one thing I do want to add that I like is here at do Ford insurance group, we tell the good, bad and the ugly about all. And Peter even mentioned that Chris told him the ugly, which most people do not do yeah. in this industry. I, I love the, the, some of the other influencers out there and I'm on good terms with everybody, but there's one in particular where a certain YouTuber, like, Hey, I sell, tell us, I sell over the phone. I'm on the beach and I'm sitting here in my beach chair and 
watching the waves go by and I'm closing deals. I was like, come on, man. Like, no, you're grinding it out all day long, 10 to 12 hours. There ain't no beach sitting. You're not sipping on a, you know, martini or whatever. Like you're, you're in your room with the doors closed. So nobody will distract you. <laughs> God forbid you're on a beach, all sorts of distractions there. <laughs> So it, there's, there's this idea of this glory with it, which, you know, I guess there are some nice things about it, but work is work, you know, and, and it's, it's just the way it is. <laughs> so uh, let's transition. Let's talk about the mentorship, because again, that's the big thing to me about what we've done differently and, and really where I think we excel versus the entire competition out there. Nobody really does the kind of training we do to the level that we do. And we were always really good with training, but bringing David on board as well as our other teammates help train agents has been, I think, life-changing. So Peter, can you kind of describe what the mentorship aspect has been like to you and how it's helped you uh, uh, overcome that learning curve, uh, seeing success in the field? Yeah, so I'll, I'm going to quote someone that's a lot smarter than me because I think that's always good. Um, Alex Hermosi put it uh, that you're paying down your ignorance tax, that the only reason that's keeping you from your, your goals is that you're getting taxed on what you don't know every year that there are other people out there doing it. They just have a skill set and knowledge that you don't have and you can go acquire it. But until you acquire until you acquire it, you're taxed at that, um, you know, whatever you want to call it premium uh, for not having it. And so this program has accelerated that uh, reducing that. I, I don't even know uh, it from what I've heard from, from uh, David, what I've heard from John and other people I've talked to. I mean, it sounds like I've, shrunk about six, three to six months of a learning curve in a week to two weeks. Um, I mean, that's just incredible. That's a tremendous amount of suffering uh, mitigated um, out in the field, pulling your hair out, get, having trouble with applications. Uh, it just everything you can possibly fathom can go wrong in this industry, will go wrong. And having someone that I can call that's on call, you know, throughout the day. I mean, I think my first five to six apps, I had them on the phone for each one. I mean, it was invaluable. Who knows how many of those wouldn't have gone through if I didn't have that feedback. Um, so I, I am under no uh, illusion that this was like simply my doing. I'm doing the work. I'm doing what everyone tells me to do. Um, but, you know, I, I, it doesn't take a genius to realize how many things can go wrong in this industry if you don't have direction and counsel. And I'll, I'll add to this, and then David, I'm going to pop you in here. I want you to kind of describe how the mentorship works kind of day to day with new agents with us. Um, yeah, man, uh, it, when it comes to this business, uh, the biggest issue, and, and this is the nature of how this business has been, and it has grown more this way. It's, it's, it's remote. Even though you're selling in person, it's remote. David lives in Tennessee. Peter, you're up in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. It's not like you report to an office every day where you have to report to a superior where you'll have ride along opportunities at your beck and call. It's just not like that anymore for the vast majority of agents. And there's this huge chasm that's now been created where this knowledge gap is a lot harder to fill because there's not somebody in your corner to help you out to the extent. Yeah, because the way it works now is, is again, most organizations, what do they do? They mass recruit. You got to pulse, throw you into the mix and figure it out. Good luck. And, and you got to figure things out. But there's this tenuous period in the beginning we're, we're having help from some agents or a lot of agents. It means the difference between success and failure. And that's kind of, I think, what we're trying to fill the gap in at the Ford Insurance Group now with mentorship is, is helping those agents who may otherwise fail, who didn't have somebody who was taking their phone calls, helping them with apps, et cetera, get through that learning curve, like you said, in a lot faster period of time and seeing success a lot faster. So... Um, I'm super pumped about it because it is really a game changer. David, talk about how the mentorship looks when a new agent joins and works with you on the face-to-face -face side. Okay. Basically, um, you know, they would join. Uh, there's different outlets out there of how to join. Uh, but once they join, basically, I receive an email that someone has joined the program. Well, I immediately try to either text or call you know, just to make that first acquaintance with them, let them know who I am. And then what we'll do that, I'll go ahead and get them started on script. And I feel that the script is 90% of the battle sometimes out there for an agent. Um, so we go ahead and we start working on that script. 
And I normally don't start the two calls a day until the following Monday because I want them to already have two to five days on that script. Uh, and then what we'll do Monday, we uh, with all new agents, I start them off two calls a day. And we are going over script. They are sending me recordings of their script during the day, you know, so I can see how the progress is going. And I tell you, you take one from one of our first meetings and compare it to the one on Friday afternoon, there's such a difference, Dave. Um, and I think that part right there, because me personally, I feel a lot of agents fail in this business because of lack of confidence off the bat. And I think that's really what we're trying to bring to the agents is the confidence that myself or one of the other mentors are going to be there for them to direct them. And then lastly, the biggest thing, we've already made the costly mistakes on our wallet. I know you have Dave. I know I have. Um, so we can relay that to these people and say, no, don't do this. Let me direct you to what's working. And then let me give you the tools to work it with. And then you've also got me if you've got any problems or questions. So Peter, what was what was that week of mentorship? So so David talked about a little bit twice a day meetings. What did that look like for you? you can kind of take us through that process of what it was like getting started and, and kind of your your process of learning in that first weeks and, and how you felt you progressed. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I think having a twice a day is a game changer. Um, uh, it's, it's like two bookends to your day. And so what that means is you feel like you got someone with you. I mean, you can call them during the day too, but there's something about having that staple at both ends that even if there's a, a hailstorm in the middle of those two meetings, you know, you still, it feels it feels nice. You feel connected. You feel grounded. Um, as far as going over stuff with him, um, yeah, we went over the script several times. We went over all three of them, the door knocking, the over the phone. I started doing appointments over the phone because I was having success with that. Transition to door knocking as I kind of built up more confidence. Um, so we'd go over all three of those scripts. Um, he would, he, he helped me with a lot of other stuff too. Like just, uh, things that make things work more smoothly in the field. Like I printed out a sheet for, uh, I'm not gonna get too in the weeds here, but with prosperity, with the health questions, then I can just go down them. I kind of know where they're gonna they're gonna land. And then from there, you know, just, just little the little things that add up and make a huge difference. I mean, that's what mentorship does. It's the five minute conversations here and there. It's, you know, them listening to your thing and giving you one pointer there. I mean, those like one, two percent things, they add up into you being 120 percent ahead of someone else that doesn't have it very quickly. Yeah. And 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 probably David and I can both attest. I mean, when we started, I had somebody who would take a phone call or two, but you know, we're on our own. And 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 to some extent, you're your own worst enemy in this business. You know, you start thinking, well, I I don't want to go work. I've had a bad day. Let me just stay at home. You know, when you could be out there door knocking, there's a there's a, your, you know, your next big commission checks behind that extra door knock or two that you didn't do. Right. And it's just like death by a thousand paper cuts. But, you know, one of the things you get with us and we're not nagging you or yelling at you, or it's not like micromanagement, but it's, it's that kind of gentle nudge that, you know, you need to hear that voice you need that we all need <laughs> that we want. We'll probably try to avoid on our own is kind of where the mentorship, you know, philosophy really comes from and, and, and doing the things we know we need to do, but maybe find in our beginnings or, you know, less encouraged to do so. So um, take us through that. Go, go, go ahead. Real quick. Go ahead. Yeah. So I, I just think it's, it's really important because this is something David and I both have talked about that another element to mentorship is you have these men and women that are, their time's valuable. There's a reason why they're a mentor, right? That they have something that's worth listening to. They have something to offer. And therefore when they give their time to you, I feel like immediately very humbled by that. And also on those days, just this is why I wanted to tie it in. You said those days when you don't feel like going out, I have found that if I have any, you know, hesitance like that any day, the the first thing that that I think of is I'm not going to disappoint David. I'm not going to dislike, I'm not going to, these two guys are giving me their time. I, the least I can do is go out and do my job. So I think that's a huge buffer, you know, maybe 
that was seen or unforeseen, but part of this this program, I, I think it really mitigates that as far as that, you know, just if you're alone in it, then who's watching if you do what's right or wrong, you know? Yeah, it's easy to get away with that stuff because yep. nobody's yeah. watching, you know? This is all the things that, you know, that's just great about this. Like that, I never anticipated that kind of response with the implementation of this program. And it's just, all of it is, again, designed to to get what you ultimately want as the agent, which is results, right? In a much more conducive uh, fashion than figuring it out on your own and being another statistic, right? So, Peter, take us through this first kind of, you, were, you got through the mentorship, you got into the field, briefly kind of take us through the kind of results that you got writing, like, like talk about your first day in the field and, and kind of how it went for you. So the first day, so my first appointment ever, I got the guy to take out his checkbook and that blew my mind when someone gave me a check and I'm seeing their routing number and that, and that was like, this works. I mean, this works. I didn't write that guy. He had term policies that he thought were whole life. I didn't know how to pivot in the moment, but that could have been my first sit could have been a sale and that would have been unbelievable. But, um, and I'm still going to circle back to him, but that day, something in my brain like broke. That was, I, I can't even, I feel like I paid off like almost most of my struggling on that day. I don't know how to describe it. It was like a biblical moment. Like I had this choice point. I was eating lunch outside of a Wawa and I was like, either I'm going to say this isn't for me or I'm going to go on the other side of this. And it was like everything you can imagine, all the anxieties that I've had as a kid, uh, you know, just that, that tunnel vision you get when you're stressed out and you don't know what to do everything came together and it was just this moment where I was either going to go on the other side of this wall or I was going to stay behind this wall that I've been behind my whole life and I don't want to sound arrogant or anything but after that it's it hasn't been that difficult it was that there was this and maybe I just consolidated my pain in one real like almost like a biblical moment I don't know um but after and I'm not saying there haven't been stressful things where it's like okay I've got to you know calm down you know there, there's been little things but as far as like like rearing my head and being like, Oh my God, is this for me? That's the only moment was that first day. And after that, it's really calmed down. And by the second week, um, talking to John, talking to David, I mean, I've gotten to a point where I'm super comfortable. I, I, I am, I'm emotionally unfazed by the interactions, whether they go well or not. I mean, if they go well, it boosts it up and then you get to the next one, but it's, and, and I don't credit that to myself at all. I totally credit that to them. Um, just, I, Mentorship, there's, there's, people are so multifaceted that um, just having people around you that are doing the right thing cannot be described or read about or talked about enough. There's, it's, it's, there's, um, there's a great study. It's called the Harvard study. They tracked the poorest, uh, like the poor, a poor group of men in Boston and a Harvard class all throughout their life. It's still going on. It's the longest psychological study ever. And they found that the number one factor in success was who you're around. If you're around unsuccessful people, you had a 5% chance of being successful. And if you grew up around successful people, you had a 95% chance of continuing to be successful. So it just can't be overstated enough having someone like that, listening to how they talk, how they think, and obviously the direct inputs of, you know, this is literally what you should do. This is a troubleshoot. You know, this is a contingency plan. Um, it can't be overstated enough, I think. Yeah, it, it's interesting to me, you had that epiphany and, and where that wall was broken down, you know, and, and, and it's that realization that people will trust you and buy and give you their money. And, and it's like, really? Yeah. If <laughs> I, I had that too. It's like, I can't believe I'm taking this check from the stranger and people actually do this. And it's like, they trust me. You know, I'm like, I'm a kid. Like I was 26 or I think it happened to me when I was like 21 or 22 running a personal training gym and these, you know, women with money would give it to me. And I'm like, wow, cool. I like it. So, but that it's, it's, it's empowering too, right? Like, there you go. You find out you have this capacity that, you know, you never thought you had or could have done. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's empowering. And it's one little wall that so many people, unfortunately in life allow to stand tall, you know, when it could be broken down, but just getting out there and doing what you've done, which is taking massive action as much as, as David and I appreciate, uh, and certainly John Campbell too, the nice words, but we're all thrilled that. And like so many people in this business, you're taking the action, right? It comes back to you, Peter. You know, you're the one getting out there making it making it happen. We're just the Sherpa. <laughs> We're showing you the path up the mountain, you know, but you're climbing it, right? So so hats off to you, man, for for taking that leap of faith. Cause that's that's really really where it comes down to is that inflection point 
you know. So uh, last bit here before we wrap this up again, Peter, thanks for being here. Um, advice to agents. Um, agents who are looking to join an agency, looking to do well in this business, maybe they feel a little worried about the MLM culture, um, getting enough training. Uh, what would you advise them to do in their process to finding an organization to make sure wherever they end up with us or somebody else that they get the best shot of of success that's that they're you know uh, have available to them so with an with an industry where so much can go wrong and does go wrong for so many things uh, for so many reasons you need to find people that are trustworthy right there if you're not getting good leads if you don't understand how to vet lead vendors what it means to have leads like cross sell to other people or cross call. Like there's so much that you don't know when you pass your insurance and get exam that it's ridiculous. I mean, you, you are not set up to thrive in the industry at all by just getting your license. Um, so you've got to find, you have to educate yourself on the industry. The first thing I would do, I spent over a year learning about this industry. And, and if you spend enough time, I, I would really have this be a slow burn. If, if you're serious about this, you can become a millionaire doing this easily. Um, and it's a serious opportunity that's absolutely possible for a ton of people. And, and I take it very seriously. And I think I would, I'm very conservative with stuff. And I know that, and I think you are in a lot of ways too. I've, I, that's what I think really resonated in me listening to your content. I would have, I would have over $10,000 saved up if you're going to do face to face. Um, if, especially if you're living alone, it, it depends, it would fluctuate based on your your, your mortgage or your rent payments, but you need to have like a several months paid for and, and, and uh, ready to transition. If you're going to go full time, I just, I don't want to um, cut anyone, you know, or, or like, you know, not give the full truth. So have money right. set aside, act like this is a business that you're getting involved in. Take it seriously, study the industry, not just insurance, figure out where you're going to be, spend enough time at it that you can figure out if someone's full of it or not. I mean, that's the thing. If people don't spend enough time with people to realize that's something I did. I spent so much time re reading and listening to things that I finally found someone that made sense like you. And I, but you don't know what makes sense if you don't spend the time. So right. I would have this be a slow burn. I know it's super exciting. I know that the money is amazing and I'll, I've made more money in the last two weeks, even after lead spend and, and, you know, just a 75% upfront and, you know, maybe a 20% fall off rate than I did in like in nine months of working as a part-time mechanic during college. I mean, it's ridiculous. The money is insane. And I know that that makes people want to jump on right, right away, but you really want to make sure you're situated well. And I mean, a, a, not to um, plug you guys too much, but a great way to bypass a lot of that and have people that are going to vet lead vendors, have people that are going to show you the ropes would be to join a good agency. And this is one. Um, there are other ones too. I was looking at a few, but uh there are a lot of elements that just uh, the fact that you had also done the social media element, I thought as I started to grow, not just from my production. And I, I, I wanted to be around someone like you that I could pick your brain maybe down the road about how you branded yourself on sure. other levels. But um, yeah, I, I would take a very conservative approach. Take this very seriously. This can absolutely change your life and give you a life that you could never even dream of. Um, if you do it right, if you do the work, if you get set up with the right people and you know what you're doing. So take it very seriously. It's a serious opportunity. Thank you for that, Peter. Real quick. If you're frightened by what Peter said, I told Peter to be <laughs> straight up honest, $10,000 in the bank. Do you mean I can't sell if I don't have that much? Just as a side note, you can always start this part-time. I did it part-time and I didn't have that money. I had a lot of debt. But I started part time because, you know, any business takes some time to get up and running to be profitable. And I didn't want to lose my sure thing, but I really like the idea of insurance. So you can slow roll in that way, too. Just make sure you give a full time mentality to your part time final expense business model. So it does work if you work it the right way. So that would be kind of like a, a compromise, if you will, so a kind of middle ground if you're worried about the investment requirement. And then last thing, David, if you don't mind popping and give us your two cents on this um, advice for new agents, um, what should they be concerned with uh, who are thinking about getting into this business? Uh, what should they look for to give them the best chances of success? Well, like, like Peter said, I mean, you want to do your research. You want to make sure who you're going to work with is who they, who they really are. And that means you've got to investigate a little bit. 
Um, I've worked with people in the past that I didn't understand the entire program coming in and you really want to understand that. Um, and then you want to look for like, like Peter said, you know, I, I think my granddaddy used to say birds of a feather flock together. Maybe, um, you want to surround yourself with, um, like-minded people because the worst thing you can do and, and, and Cardone and all the other ones will tell you is be around negative Nancy all day long because then you're going to be negative by the end of the day because you've heard all that negativity. And one good thing with this program, uh, everyone that has come in so far is like-minded. Uh, they want to succeed in this business. Um, and, and that you've got to want to do that. If you don't want to succeed, it's not for you, no matter where you go. I really feel just do that nine to five, clock in and out, get that regular paycheck every Friday. But, you know, the ones that want to be a business owner, want to control and manage their time, um, you have to, I tell everybody when they come in, give me 110%. And I'll give you 140. And I truly believe that. But if you're not going to give 110, you know, you, you might want to look for something else. But find people who are like-minded. Find a business plan that meets you. I'm big on setting goals, uh, planning the future for everybody. And then also, I mean, find somebody that will tell you the truth, you know. Yeah. I, that's my biggest thing. You know, I want somebody who's going to tell me they beat 10 doors yesterday, struggled all day long and stayed out long enough. They finally got that $1,200 in the bank at nine o'clock at night. You know, I want people that's not going to sugarcoat it. Uh, you know, Kool-Aid, we call it. Uh, don't drink the Kool-Aid. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I mean, that that that's my take on it, Dave. Well, Peter and David, we appreciate you kindly. And if for those of you out there in the YouTube's world wants a little bit more taste on what we do, go to davidduford.com. Uh, we are actively and always looking for people, whether you have experience or not in the insurance business, but have coachability, self uh, work ethic, and are able to get out there. Uh, we invite you to learn more about our mentorship program to see if it's a good fit for you. Uh, once you're there, you'll click the FAQ button. And then just uh, watch all the information there. And then if you like what you see, you'll see how you can apply uh, to the mentorship program and then go from there. Again, Peter and David, thanks for being here. Appreciate you. Thank thanks. you.